Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me once again. You're always most welcome. So today, something a bit different. Another manufacturer that I've not really had much uh, contact with and experience of. So I thought we'd take a look at Valom. Valom are in the Czech Republic. They're kind of a sort of a medium to small run kit manufacturer. Not one of the big ones like Edward. Whoa. It's not necessarily a bad thing, is it, given my views on them. But anyway, we won't get to that. Now we've got here the uh, C46A Commando, which is basically um, a transport plane. Quite an interesting looking thing, very very Dakota-like, but maybe a bit more exciting. It's like a, uh, a Dakota sort of uh, met with a comet and had a baby sort of thing. <laughs> anyway, interesting manufacturer. So it's, a, it's basically an Israeli Air Force uh, aircraft. Uh, there's not much writing in terms of telling us about the product or the aircraft on the outside, so let's just have a look and see what we've got. Here we go, 70 second scale, so it shouldn't be too huge. Um, now, by the way, this is uh, a kit that was loaned to us by our good friend David, and he's got some extras because I believe he's. I don't think he was impressed with the clear parts or, or they were missing or something. Uh, I'll get into that in a minute. Um, wow, well, it's very interesting. It's, it's, it slightly reminds me of Matchbox actually. Uh, and he's also got a mass set for it. Um, pom, pom, pom. New Wear Space Kit Series. Okay, new wear. Uh... Right, so some very interesting stuff going on here. <coughs> right, excuse me. We do get a right up. That's a good start from Valon straight away. Well done. So it says the C 46 was originally designed as a civil transport aircraft to take 36 passengers under the designation CW 20. Development. It doesn't say where. Okay, that's a kind of a strange thing. Uh, is this an Israeli aircraft then? I presume it is. An Israeli designer, I presume. Oh, it's Curtis. Okay, it does say Curtis here. Well, I don't know why it doesn't say that anywhere else. So, okay, start again. So it's Curtis of America. Uh, so it's the CW20. Caught their interest particularly due to its large fuselage and the possibility of large transport capacity and the aircraft's flight ceiling. Therefore, a contract was signed for initial 25 aeroplanes modified for military purposes under the designation C-46. <laughs> right, it goes on. Uh, it was equipped with Pratt & Whitney R-2843 engines, later 51 versions, with an output of uh, 1470 kilowatts each and four, well, I don't know why they can't say brake horsepower, but anyway, and four blade Curtis propellers. The first serial C-46 was manufactured at a factory in Buffalo in May 1942, so it's basically a World War II generation aircraft. Uh, the aircraft of the first series served primarily as transports, however the Air Force demanded modifications uh, for the acceptance of heavier loads. Therefore the C-46A version was created, Okay, of which 1,554 were produced. That's quite a lot, isn't it? A big plane like that, wow. Uh, it was given the combat name Commando. Not to be confused with the Arnold Schwarzenegger film of the same title. <laughs> the, uh, the, the cargo space was strengthened and the cargo door was enlarged. Okay. The, uh, this version used mainly to transport route from India to China and via the so-called Himalayan rump, the hump. It was also used to supply Chiang Kai-shek's army after the Japanese conquered the Burmese route. 40 of the C-36As were delivered to the US Marine Corps under the designation R-5C1 and served in the, Royal, in the Naval Air Force for transport purposes. Another extended version, the C-46D, of which 1430 were produced, that's another big chunk of planes. That's a lot of aircraft that, for a big plane like this. Uh, and these were modified to facilitate parachute jumping. It entered operational service in 1944-45. They were mainly used in the Pacific, India, China and Burma and were not widely used in Europe. They were deployed in large numbers for Operation Varsity. Uh, operation in March 1945 during the operation to storm the Rhine. However, they suffered very heavy losses during this operation, 19 of the 72 aircraft being shot down. Gosh. Further deployment in these operations was therefore prohibited by Army Command. After the war, it was sold to a number of civilian airlines around the world. 
They were deployed in operations in 1948 in the Israeli War of Independence when they transported military material to Israel. This included dismantled S-199 fighters from Czechoslovakia. S-199 fighters. I'm not sure if I know that one. The C-46 also served in Korea and Vietnam um, wars in various USAF operations. The Japanese Air Force used the C-46 all the way until 1966, and even the Chinese Air Force had them until 1982. Wow, well that's a very good write-up actually, in fairness, once I got into it. I just wish they'd made it a little bit clearer and call it Curtis at the beginning, but anyway, we got there. So, we have the outer... Oh, it's a bit, all gone a bit um, Great Wall hobby on us, this hasn't it? <laughs> Falling apart. So the outer uh, of the instructions is the colour call -out. It's not a bad looking plane really, it's a bit, a bit chubby you might say, but it's got quite a... It's got that sort of comet sort of style, nice sort of pointy nose to it, which I think is quite quite attractive actually. So you've got the Shosh, the Israeli, um, uh, the Israeli um, Air Force's version here, uh, and then they've got one in 1949, Spring 49, and Summer 49. So both options are Israeli on this occasion. And then we have got our uh, sprue map. Completely showing the day, uh, the decals, and on the other, other side a bit more of it, and then we get, and then we get into the actual build. I, I don't like the instructions. I think they've been looking at too much Great Wall hobby, but anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. So we start off with a couple of seats. We've got seat belts for the look of it. I don't know if they are in photo etch or some other form. Maybe they're just in plastic. Uh, so you're building up your two seats uh, at the front. And then you've got your um, sort of cockpit and control area instruments. And you've got all your trim wheels and things there as well. And your two uh, yokes. Pilot navigator building up your cabin here. All looks quite nice. Uh, then we've got our um, wheels and tyres coming together there. Uh, and then we've got the, quite an interesting looking tail wheel assembly. I guess it's quite a big strong tail wheel for something like this. Um, because it's a, uh, it's a tail sitter, but it has uh, what looks like a retractable, quite beefy looking tail wheel. At least they are telling you some information here. They're saying left wing bottom part, right wing bottom. More than you get on, you know, tack-on kits, for example. Um, oh, yes, it's a, bit, it's a little bit busy the way they've actually created this design. Not sure I like that, but uh, yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely too busy. That isn't it. That, that's not the best way of producing your instructions. This reminds me of the Kinetic Sea Harrier when they modified it to be the FA2 version, um, with all these arrows pointing everywhere. You know. Anyway, you're doing the um, underneath the nacelles underneath the wing and putting your your gear in there. Then you're going to build up your actual engines and cowlings here. Uh, complete your exhausts. Um, oh, there are some metal parts in this, so there's obviously some photo etch. Then we've got uh, bringing our main sort of uh, fuselage together um, and putting your windows in, which you have to go in first, of course, don't forget that. <laughs> uh, then we've got the, uh, there's like a wing spar underneath, which is going to help to affix the wing. Uh, and then we've got several yeah, arrows. What's up? Uh, uh, why have they got arrows pointing like that? I don't like vague arrows pointing at something without any clarity. I think they're basically saying that section 19 is when your wings are going to go on. I don't know why they've done it that way. It's just very confusing, but anyway. Then we've got our gear, gear, gear doors and props going on. Uh, and then showing them on for no apparent reason. And then showing the finished aircraft. Yeah, I've got to be honest, I'm not sure I like those instructions all that much. Um, in some places too busy, in some places too quiet, if you know what I mean. A bit inconsistent the way they you know, shit an arrow with a number next to it. it doesn't mean a great deal to me, but anyway, there we go. Let's have a look what we got. So we've got some extras first, we'll have a little, oh, so we've got, okay, we don't need to open this, it's just a mask set that David's gone and got himself, because I think that's pretty wise with a plane with lots of glass work. Um, so this is the new, new wear masks, and they do look quite nice, actually, those. They've got masks for everything, the wheels, the windows, all the cockpit. Yeah, yeah, that looks quite nice. Okay, very good. Um, 
Then he's got, I think we should look at this. Then he's got a one piece canopy section. Now, I'm gonna, I'll tell you what we'll do, I'll open that, but I'm just gonna leave it to the side because I think we should look at the main plastic. Otherwise we're not gonna know why he's really bought that. There must be a reason. So let's have a look at this. I think it'll give it greater context if we know what the standard kit's like before we look at the extras and aftermarket. Just have a look, sort of a matchboxy feel to the plastic and the way it looks, just from this distance anyway. <coughs> right, so indeed we do have some photo edge which looks rather nice. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, I think Valon can, can definitely learn a bit on their instructions. I don't think that, that was... Uh, they're going to lose a mark there because I don't think that was the greatest instructions I've seen by a long, long chalk. <laughs> right, so we've got some interesting photo etch which feels relatively thin. You've got things like the, the yoke controls for the pilot and navigator. Uh, I want to see a little bit of bracing. You've got some uh, rudder pedals and things like that. So quite a lot of it's going in the cockpit. And then you've got these very, very tiny little seat belts. Can you see those? That is... Those are small, I've got to say, very small. So that's that. Then we've got our markings. And this is the Israeli Air Force. Look at that. Israeli Air Force markings. Uh, why is one on a white background? What's all that about? That's odd. Um, let's bring you back a little bit for this. Yeah, these are on a white, a white background. I'm just wondering why. Why? I'm sure, I'm missing something here. Let's just go back to the instructions because I want to understand this. I think it would be beneficial. Just bear with me. There's those colour call outs. Uh, it was for underneath. Underneath. For some reason they want it to be um, they want it to be uh, differentiated, I think, uh, on the underside. Anyway, there we go. So yeah, so we've got quite a lot of stripes, Israeli stars of David and that's kind of it really, it's not, it's not too busy and there's not much in the way of uh, stencils, which is a good thing. Because they can be nightmarish, can't they? Alright, put that back in there. Bring you back a bit. See what we've got here then. So we've got, we've got a bag here. Ah, now I think I've seen what the problem is. So let's have a look at these clear parts first. So David, right, okay, I think I get it. David has chosen to have a one piece aftermarket canopy for the main front here and the reason is reason being as you can probably tell this has gone the uh, the sort of airfix seeking route of having a split windscreen well who thought that was a good idea and it's a shame because the gloss work is actually really nice clear parts are beautiful in terms of clarity sharpness you know lovely finish to them why did they go and do that? That was a really dumb thing to have chosen, wasn't it? So instead, he has gone and bought some aftermarket. I'll in a second, I promise. He's gone for a single piece. I've got a horrible feeling it won't be quite as clear, to be honest. Um, so somebody has basically... Yeah, so this is Aerocraft models. Um, not quite sure where they are. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure that's a vast improvement. I don't think the glasswork is as good, but I understand David's desire to buy it because having a really great split down the middle of the screen is just asking for trouble. That was a dumb design by Valon, to be honest. So they're going to lose a point for that as well. Uh, you shouldn't have to go buy an aftermarket because of bad design, really. Aftermarket should be enhancing things, not having to replace basic parts. And if you look carefully, it's not, yeah, it's not the clearest, best. Some of that might polish out. There's some very, mm, it's a bit agricultural, if I'm honest, I think. Uh, yeah, not sure. I think he's going to have some fun with this. He's going to need to get that polished up to try and remove the marks that exist there. Can we see them? Is that, is that the best angle? There, there. Yeah, I don't really like it. I'm not that enamoured with that either, to be honest. So, it's a bit of a weak point, obviously, on this kit in a way. So, uh, he's tried to correct that. He's bought aftermarket. I fear, poor old David may have uh, swapped one problem for another one, if I'm being brutally honest. Um, but 
I was very tempted at least to try to try attempt one I'd try and PVA glue this together with some glue and glaze and see how that comes out and if it's, then if it's not satisfactory and doesn't really work then I would maybe use the aftermarket because that is so clear and beautiful it's just stupid that they didn't make it one piece what were they thinking of? that is just dumb so, <clears throat> bit of a black mark around that the rest of the clear parts though seem absolutely lovely those little windows look very nice so some strange choices there here we've got some, comes with some resin typical Czech Republic, they always um, give you extras don't they? and we've got some lovely little resin engines here, look at these oh, aren't they nice as with a lot of resin, it's not the best colour for photography. Giving you the, uh, the feel of the detail. But those are very nice little engines. And they are very crisply moulded. However, I noticed that... Oh, I've just noticed that one of the cylinders is off. Did we know this? See that? Missing. Oops. Yeah, we've got a missing cylinder. It's in the bag. Oh dear. Must have been damaged in transit. Okay, let's look at the one that's not got the missing cylinder then. That's a bit unfortunate. Obviously a little bit delicate. Yes, this is a, this is a complete one. So, this one's okay. Alright, that's better. Can we see that? That's very nice resin, in fairness. Um... I hope the camera's doing it justice. I know it struggles with this very pale resin, but it is very, very crisp. Yeah, very impressed with that. Shame that the one's broken off. So, mm. I won't mark them down for that, but perhaps I could, you know, pack those a bit better. Then we've got the actual plastics. Let's zoom out and have a look at the proper plastic. Now then, now remember we're talking about short run manufacturer here, Valum. So there's a few bits of flash here and there, has to be said. Um, and I haven't got huge experience with some of these short run guys, only with one or two of them. But it looks okay, you know, it's quite nicely shaped. A little bit of clean up and I think it'll be okay. Let's have a closer look here. And see that we have got that little bit of flash here and there. In sort of obvious places, you know. Um, you have to be a bit careful with your clean up on these sprue contact points as well. And you can see the inconsistency of the way that they've yeah been moulded into the into the sprue gate up to the actual uh, sort of sprue tree. But it's nice. Um, it's got nice uh, panel lining is recessed. Um, it's quite nice. It's quite nice. A bit too close, I think. Yeah, it is. It's quite. It's quite pleasant, actually. A bit too close. There we go. Uh, this side actually seems to have slightly less flash, in fairness. Yeah, given it's a short run for the manufacturer, you know. Let's have a look. See what the wings are like. Hmm. Again, you know. Um, just be a bit careful when you're cutting these off because again we've got some fairly fairly ugly contact points which are fairly typical with these short run manufacturers uh, and you're going to have a little bit of flash here and there you see it on the propellers here flash just wants a bit of clean up see it there on the blade But yeah, not bad. How it goes together, I, I, I dare not think, really. <laughs> I dread to think. <coughs> um, these short run kits are, you know, there are a lot of these manufacturers do these unusual models. Uh, and you often don't have a choice, so, you know, we should be grateful that these companies set up and do these things. Uh, I don't want to sound uh, like I'm criticising anybody at all. Um, it's just a case of, well, if these guys didn't do it, who, who would you get one from, you know? In fairness, they seem to have got a good attention to detail with some of the things like the trim tabs. They're nicely done. Panel lines, trim tabs, done all very nicely indeed, really. Some good detail there. Look at that. Yeah, 
The, the wheels and tyres look fairly nice as well. Again, fine detail there. And then we have the Spitter didn't put any crew, there's no crew, is there? Uh, but then we've got the, um, the sprue that's got the, uh, the sort of bulkheads and all the internal cockpit area and cabin, so to speak. So we've got our little doorway here, the cabin, um, lots of controls on the back, uh, and we've got uh, the engine intakes and the front of the engine cowling. Yeah, it's not bad, you know, it's just going to require a little bit of work. It's just that it's the nature of the beast, isn't it? Really? A um, little bit of instrumentation there. I'm a bit loath to zoom in because <laughs> obviously you're going to get some flash and stuff um, in varying varying degrees. It's a little bit uh, nature of the beast sort of thing. A little bit flashy. You're not going to get Tamiyar or uh, or even ICM quality here. I don't think. In fairness. So yeah, I think it's a it's a kit that's going to require it's going to be a labour of love for sure. It'll require a bit of dedication and a, a real passion for the subject, I think. But it, yeah, it seems very competent in fairness, and it's um, I'm trying to remember if you tell me how much this was. I think it wasn't very expensive. I think it was about thirty pounds, thirty three pounds, something like that. Uh, under forty, I think. Anyway, so. It's your page of money and you take your choice. I mean, as I say, I don't think we've got a lot of options. If you want one of these C46 Commandos, I don't think a lot of other people even make one. So really, you've got very limited options. And uh, if I was very keen on the subject, I think that that would be doable. Clean it up, you know. Um, it, it, it's just, I think the thing lets it down a bit. I think there's clear parts for a bit. Beautifully made. That's what I can't, you know, understand. Beautifully made, but badly designed clear parts, I would summarise it as. Uh, why, why would they want to split it down the middle like they did? That was a crazy decision on the part of the manufacturer. Yeah. Um, could they not have just moulded it as one? Because that's what it needed and that's why David went and bought the extra part. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's a whole lot better really. You're swapping one issue for some others. And that's often the case, you know, we all buy these aftermarket parts and then sometimes when they turn up you can think, hmm, yeah. Not quite what I was thinking I was getting, to be honest. So don't want to not don't want to knock the manufacturer of that either, but not the best finishing on that clear part from us. I think it's a, I think it's a sort of seven and a half, eight out of ten. I say let's say eight out of ten have been generous because it's not bad, you know. Only let down by the clear parts, the broken, a little broken uh, engine cylinder, which is a bit of a shame because it's well you can soon fix it. I'll super glue it back on, It'll be fine. Um, just a bit of quality lacking, but you get that with these low volume manufacturers. So I think 8 out of 10 is not unreasonable. Um, you've got to factor in that we're not dealing with a Tamiya or an ICM or Tsukimura or whatever here. We're dealing with something that's a bit of a cottage industry really. Uh, and it's got a lot of appeal, you know, if you like that aircraft. Uh, I think I think that they've done the panel lining quite well. I think it'll... Uh, It'll weather up nicely and you'll be able to get, some, get it to pop. It'll look really nice. So I'm going to say 8 out of 10. I think that's fair. Hope you give me 10 out of 10 with a thumbs up, with a like. Um, and don't forget, if you haven't done already, to subscribe to the channel. Uh, and if you have, if you're a regular subscriber, just check you've dinged the notification bell and selected the all option. Because if you don't do that, YouTube will start doing strange things and occasionally you'll just not get a notification. Don't know why. That they have this very selective thing. If they think that for a day you've gone and looked at things that are not models, they'll just drop people like me. <laughs> Seems that way anyway. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope you thought it was interesting. Nice, nice to see a different manufacturer with uh, an interesting and unusual subject coming through. Uh, we've got plenty more coming in the near future. We've got still the odd Matchbox March, I think, left, and uh, some very interesting kits from ICM, etc. Uh, and we've got uh, a very interesting motor racing related subject coming up next month, which I think you'll enjoy. Um, it's a subject that's quite close to my heart and I've got quite a lot of knowledge on, so that's going to be one of those historic talks and reviews that could go on. Yeah, you, you'll need a good couple of bottles of beer ready and uh, some, or some coffee or something, and some biscuits and treats, because that's going to be a longer one, I think. Anyway, something to look forward to, I hope. 
thank you very much for joining me. Uh, until next time then, stay well, stay safe. Thanks for all your time. Until next time, thanks a lot. Bye for now.